key verses, uh, chapter 1, 11 through 13, and chapter 20, 30 through 31. Um, who would read the first chapter 1, verses 11 through 13 from New World Translation? No. Yeah, it's supposed to be uh, originating from a lot of Greek and Hebrew manuscripts. Yes. So they say. Well, to 13? Yeah. Uh, he came into his own, and those who were his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name, who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. chapter 30. Therefore, many other signs Jesus also performed in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these have been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you have life in him. And key chapter is chapter 3. So in John 2, we put the evangelistic John thought the book was evangelist. Yeah. Well, you're going to have to apologize now, you guys. Well, we'll, we'll have a little conversation. Good, you know, what about all these bad things you said about me? That gospel? Well, he's going to be waiting at the door when he gets in here. You see, I hope that Peter will be there. So we <laughs> no, won't have to pay Peter's going to be like, how do we get any jobs if you hold it? No. <laughs> okay. Let's take uh, 20 ish, 5 uh, ish. ish. Right. So <laughs> there's, it says in the instructions there's no quiz next week. Next week? Next lesson. Uh, because we have presentations, right? We read just for emphasis. Where's this presentation talking about? Yeah, what? It's quite good. Is that PJ? Oh, we Christ in John. This book presents the most powerful case in all the Bible for the deity of the incarnate Son of God. Just don't use it for witnessing or evangelism. <laughs> <laughs> It was probably the best um, book to use while witnessing to heretical sects such as Gnostics or Nestorians. In fact, a lot of critics uh, gave this book a much later date, probably 2nd or 3rd century AD, because the introduction is echoing the conflict between uh, Christianity and Gnosticism. That's why it says, in the beginning there was the Word. It's actually, I think, First John. Right? Mm -hmm. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. It's First John. Isn't it? No. It's a John 1. It's a John 1. Okay, John 1. So, um, if you read it in Greek, it's, in the beginning there was Logos. Mm -hmm. And the Logos was with God, and the Logos was God. Mm -hmm. It's actually play on some of the Gnostic ideas, because Gnostics believe that God who created the material universe is an evil God. Because nothing that is material could be good. It's all futile and it's uh, finite. But they believe that the higher God is Logos. He is the God who created all the immaterial things. So, and they claim that they worship Logos. That's why John, so they say, starts with Logos was with God, and Logos was God, and nothing came to be except through him. So basically saying that both God who created the material and the material world are one, and so it also joins his humanity with his being. So that's a little insight. Okay, uh, here you see the photograph of the Last Supper.
and John is to the left of Jesus. What do you think is to the right of him? Jesus. In this picture, it's actually Peter. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's supposed to be Judas. If you look at the seating arrangement or laying down arrangement at the Passover feast, it's not Leonardo da Vinci's table with Jesus and his bodies over there. That's the 16th century heresy. But usually, huh? The table would be usually here. Uh, there would be four people at each these are kind of like recliners. The door is usually located right here. So the first person uh, close to the door will be the almost like a bodyguard, a bodyguard or the manager of the feast who would recommend where to put certain dishes, who is in position of honor and so on. This is where Peter is. Okay, he's the oldest and so on. And there were probably many other tables because there were women there and some, somebody else. Three most important positions are at this table. The host would usually be in the middle. The host of the party, which is Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, next to him, right here, is John. That's how he can lean on Jesus's chest. He simply leans backward. They're all laying down. And Judas is right behind Jesus. Jesus' back is facing Judas. This is position of the most honorable guest. Uh, and Jesus shows him the utmost respect and honor by placing him in the most vulnerable to him position. Open to him with his back. So if he would be one of the enemies wanting to kill the host, he could easily reach out for the knife and stick it in Jesus' back. So this was Jesus' way of saying to Judas, I still trust you, I still respect you, and I'm willing to be your friend. That's why a lot of disciples didn't believe or didn't even figure out that Judas was the one who betrays Jesus. Because how could you be at the position of the utmost respect and honor and the sign of dipping a piece of bread into the same dish with a host is even the highest honor, of honor that one can get. And if the host takes your piece of bread and dips it into his dish and gives you, this is like the highest, highest kind of honor that host can show. So after acting out very honorable things and saying that one of you will betray me, none of the disciples would ever point out to Judas. Because it would be conflict of what I just saw and what I am hearing. It would be conflict of interest. So most likely they thought that <coughs> Jesus sent out Judas for some important assignment to be arranged since he was the treasurer of the group. And they didn't even ask Jesus, oh, is Judas the one betraying you? They started asking him, is it me, Lord? Or is it me, Lord? And so on and so forth. And Judas could easily say, is it me, Rabbi? And Jesus would say, well, you say so. And probably nobody else heard it because he is right next to him on this side. There's a lot of people talking, nobody eating. So that's how disciples couldn't figure out that Judas was the one. First of all, he was the most trusted because he had all the money. And Jesus showed him the most honor, even knowing that he was a traitor. Do you know why the movie put um, him at his right? I think this is Peter. Is it Peter or Judas? Judas. Is it Judas? Peter well, in that case, they're correct. Peter is on the, near Jesus on the movie, if I remember right. Uh, 
Pardon me? I don't think Peter's near Jesus in the in the Last Supper scene, but the, but the two is, actors Judas, look very similar. Judas is not participating in the Last Supper. Yeah. I mean, he's not participating in the whole, uh, in the Lord's Supper. Yeah. He might have been at the table well, that, yeah. for the Passover meal, <clears throat> but when Jesus raises the last of the four cups, he institutes new covenant. Mm -hmm. And at that point of time, Judas is already gone, and he is already talking to high priests. So, uh, and I think the arrangement in Mel Gibson's movie was correct. It was a U-shaped table yeah. as opposed to a straight table or something mm -hmm. else to that extent. And they were uh, they were not sitting like it shows here. They were most likely reclining, and somebody would stand up and bless the bread and break it. And there is the holy grail right there. As <laughs> you see, right there. How so plain many and people humble wasted their lives. <laughs> Look how plain and humble it looks. Exactly. Plus, I think in the real depiction of the, the Last Supper, well, in. Uh, well, the real artist depiction uh -huh. in Milan, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the apostles has three hands because they accidentally, mis when they were renovating it, when they were painting, one of the artists they mis mistook a, a piece of bread mm -hmm. as uh, one of the apostles' hands. So, so now an apostle has three hands, and then also. I guess the monks, with the monks had uh, Da Vinci. They originally commissioned Da Vinci to to paint the mural, and then years later, they decided they wanted a bigger opening for their kitchen, and so instead of um, they just hammered, chiseled it out, and knocked out Jesus's feet in the real in the real mural. So Jesus doesn't have any feet in the. I just went to see it just almost a year ago. Oh really? Um, yeah. And it's pretty amazing. Like you only get like ten minutes in there. Really? Well, the security in there is wow. It's like crazy. Like you, they have these like glass doors that slide open, and your tourist group moves in, and then the glass doors behind you close before the ones in front of you will open. They only let like maybe fifteen to twenty people in at a time, and you have to make like a reservation like a week and a half. Probably the security is run by United Air. Let's sell our airports to Pakistan. Christ in the John. There are seven statements, I am, in, uh, in John, and these are the statements, I am the bread of life. And these are ludicrous statements, if you don't understand what Jesus is talking about, and you're just new to everything. I am the bread of life, what do you mean, we have to eat you, is that cannibalism? <laughs> yeah, a lot, of, a lot of Romans, in their correspondence, were accusing Christians in cannibalism, because Lord's Supper and statements like I am the bread and who doesn't eat and who doesn't drink and so on could not partake uh, something with me are cannibalistic statements in the eyes of the Romans. And they basically stated that the Christians are probably eating their kids or eating some humans or whatever. I am the light of the world also. Uh, if you, if somebody would say that to you, you would say that's a very arrogant statement, right? It, you know, it, it's not Jesus who's saying that. I am the light of the world. You think too highly of yourself. Or I am the door. That's a statement probably you've heard a lot in the psychiatric clinics. You know? I am the door. Or I am the window. But to hear it from Jesus, we automatically assume, well, Jesus said, I am the door. Well, there's some significant. But if some psychiatric patient says, I'm the door, we are.